So far, we've been discussing the basics of the C-sharp language. Now that we have a bit of an understanding of what we're doing, let's take a look at the rest of the code we have here that makes up our application. First, we have a series of using statements. These using statements are namespace declarations, and they're specifying that you'll be using the code contained inside these namespaces in your program. c -sharp has a number of built-in namespaces that contain code that gives c -sharp its functionality. For example, the console class, with its read and write line methods, is contained inside the system namespace. If we didn't have this line, using system, then down here we would have to have write system.console.writeLine, and the same with console.readLine. By declaring which namespaces you'll be using, you can shorten your code by just referencing the class and not the namespace. Actually, our program itself is a namespace, as you can see by this line, namespace my first app. We'll look more into what namespaces are later. Inside that namespace, we have a program class. This contains the data and methods that your program uses to execute. A class is one of the ways you can use to describe an object, which we'll look into later as well. For now, think of an object as a template. For example, like a car. A car is a generic term for many different kinds of vehicles. There are many kinds of cars. But each car has an engine. Each car has tires. Each car has seats. Even though each of those may be completely different in different types of cars. A car is like an object, while a Camaro is like an instance of that object. Don't worry if it's confusing, we'll look more into that later. Inside the program class is a method called main. Again, we'll look into what static and void mean later, but the main method is a special method that is reserved as the starting point of the program. An executable program must have this method or you'll get an error when trying to compile it. Inside of that main method is the code which is executed when you run the program. That covers the structure of what we have so far. If any of this was confusing, don't worry, it will make more sense as we get through the rest of the series.